Hello all. I've been getting a lot of questions about how I've gotten my photos posted on websites like Jet Photos and Airliners. For the most part, they're the same questions that I don't want to answer repeatedly, so that's why I'm making this series. It's designed to help everyone who wants to have their photos posted there, but are having trouble making it. I am not a screener nor am I the most experienced with this, and there are a lot more photographers who can provide better help than me. If you are one of these, or you know some sort of trick for getting better photos, email me, message me, leave it in the comments, whatever. I'd like to learn about it. But please, make any criticism constructive. In this video, I'll show you my basic editing process. Brace yourself, because it's a long one, so definitely use the cheat codes in the description if you're not here for the whole thing. I use the latest version of Adobe Photoshop CC, but there are some good free platforms that do this as well. I don't know how to use those, so you'll have to figure out some things for yourself, but the basic process remains the same. I will only be using Photoshop, but if you want to use Lightroom as well, it works just fine. I should note that there are other good editing processes that also work. You may even be able to find some of them on YouTube. If you know one of these, let me know and I might look into it further. Now, let's edit a photo. So the first thing you should go over is the uh, website's photo upload guidelines. These will give you a lot of valuable information and they will detail every single reason that your photo could possibly be rejected for. So make sure to do that first. Um, but you don't need to do that before every photo, thank goodness. Just once every now and again. And if you have questions, you can refer back to it. Um, but uh, then you're going to select a photo to edit. And I've got one pre-selected here. It's a Fiji A350 that brought LDS missionaries back to Salt Lake City um, just after COVID-19 got bad. So what you want to do is you want to look through it. Um, since this is a raw file, um, uh, you can't look at it on the Microsoft Photos app but you can look through it here. So we can see it's uh, it's plenty sharp. Uh, lighting isn't a problem. Um, distance isn't a problem. Uh, we are getting kind of close to the edge of the frame there, but that should be fine. Um, so what you're looking for is vignetting, so like dark or bright corners. Um, if, if that's there, might be a problem. Uh, you also want it to be sharp, like I mentioned earlier. I usually look for some small text. The titles or the letters or numbers on the nose gear are good. Um, typically the registration is too. Um, but since in this case it's directly behind the engine, uh, it's not so great. That's not something they're going to reject for. Don't worry if that happens to you. But uh, You also don't want heat distortion, so if straight lines are very wavy, that's a problem. Um, if there are objects, like a sign obstructing part of the aircraft, that's a problem. If it's like a little taxiway edge light that blocks a tiny bit of the tire, you're probably fine, but you know. So once, once your photo passes all the tests, you're good. And if it's a raw file, if it's JPEG, you don't need to worry about this. But if it's a raw file, you're going to go down here to Optics and make sure Remove Chromatic Aberration is selected. That's just going to help you out a little bit with some stuff. Then you're going to hit Open. And it's going to take a minute. And then... Um, what you're going to do now before you crop is if this weren't a sky shot, you would have to check some of the vertical 
references it's to make sure the horizon is in fact level. So um, make sure you use vertical references for this and if they are straight up and down you're fine. If they're not you're just gonna do like you're gonna come over here to image, image rotation, arbitrary, select clockwise or counterclockwise and you're just gonna do kind of a guess and check until it's until the photo is nice and level. And you see we get these uh, white um, borders, so just make sure you crop those out when you have to do that. But since it's a sky shot, it doesn't matter so much. Um, so we can just go straight to cropping. Here you're going to select uh, the ratio. Um, Jet photos, for example, I think airliners, if you stay, if you follow the same rules, you should be fine on airliners as well, but jet photos specifically will accept anything between a 4x3 aspect ratio and a 16x9. And so when I have good backgrounds, I like to go for a bit of a taller photo uh, to get more of that in if it's a blue sky, typically 16x9 or less. You know, it just depends on your preference. I think, though, we'll go with a 6x4 for this one because we got nice, lots of nice clouds. But uh, here's what we're going to do. We're just going to make sure that um, uh, the extreme left edge of the aircraft, so the part of the aircraft that is the furthest left in the photo, we're going we're gonna to set that at a certain distance from the edge of the photo and then we're going to come over here to the extreme right edge of the aircraft and make sure that this part is the same distance from the edge of the photo as that is and then um, for most side on shots uh, this is a good rule of thumb you want this is the vertical center of the photo and this is the lateral center of the photo and where these two lines intersect you want to put that uh, somewhere in between the um, the window line on the aircraft and where the wing root meets the fuselage and that's a good rule of thumb but this is a bit of a different angle so it's gonna need to be a smidge higher just going to try and make it about halfway up, halfway down in the photo. And that looks pretty good. So once, once you've got it framed properly, you can go ahead and hit enter and then it crops and it deletes those pixels. If you need to ever undo anything, you just hit control Z. And if you need to redo something, control shift Z or command if you, um, work on Apple. So that's the crop, pretty easy. Uh, next we're gonna check for dust spots. So like when a little bit of dust um, uh, gets on your sensor, it's nasty and that's not fun. Um, or sometimes mosquitoes can do this as well. Um, but let's see. I typically zoom in and out or just move the photo around. Uh, that way if you see something, um, if it moves with the photo, it's in the photo. If it doesn't, it's part of your, it's just like something on your screen. So we've got one here. So what, we're, what I do is I go to the spot healing brush and then we're going to set the size to a little bit bigger than the spot. Put it centered over the spot so the whole um, the entire dust spot is inside this circle here. Then you're gonna hit Control Z and just click. And then we're just gonna make sure that worked by equalizing it again and it looks like it did. So then you're good there. And uh, then you can go on to lighting. So we're going to hit Control or Command, Control L to bring up the histogram. And uh, what I like to do 
is I like to find one of these peaks and center this marker on it. And then that'll get you kind of in the ballpark of the right exposure. And then you're going to hit Control U. And I like to put saturation to 15. That just makes the colors pop a little bit more. You can see that here if I undo and redo. So I do that. You don't have to, but I like to. Um, that's going to change your histogram a little bit, as you can see. So now um, what you're going to do is like, see, we've got a little peak here that we could center it on, uh, or we could move it all the way up here or down here. You just need to center it on a peak and it, and use your eye to determine whether it looks good or not. So if we take it down, that doesn't look too bad. Leave it there. Shadows are a little bright, but that looks overall a little bright. Um, so I think best to take it down. And you can just click and drag, and then when it's very a very um, thin line, you know you're not like selecting anything else. And then if that line goes down to this marker, you're good. Um, and then you're gonna hit enter. And now you're gonna drag these sliders in to match the where the info on the histogram starts, and this is your contrast adjustment to make sure you're there good. So you'll see that made the shadows a little bit darker and the highlights a little bit brighter if I undo that and redo it. Then you're gonna check again so it touches the left edge of the histogram. That's good, that's what we want, but if it goes up and there's a big spike here, that's a problem. Um, same thing on the other side. Uh, but now we're a little bit off center so we're gonna fix that and then maybe this bring this back up just a little bit more to compensate for any little adjustment on the right side and uh, that's pretty good you can see it touches the edge but it doesn't like full-on run into the wall at 70 miles an hour on either side and it's centered on a nice peak so that's how you know that your contrast is good and your um, and you're properly exposed so that's uh, that's the easy part and here's where we get into the um, more tedious stuff you might say and so first this is the sharpening stuff so first we gotta select the aircraft and there are three ways to do that if it's a clear blue sky photo, um, you're going to use the magic wand tool and you're going to select the blue portion of the sky and then typically that'll do a pretty good job of selecting um, everything but the aircraft. If, there, if there's something it's missing, um, you hold down shift and you click and drag a portion of it and you click and drag somewhere on the image to center it. But since we've got a lot of clouds, this does actually appear to be working pretty well um, in our case here, but uh, oh well. Um, and so you just do that until you've got everything, the entire aircraft and nothing else selected. Then you go to select inverse or you can hit shift control i now it selects the aircraft um, that's one way or give me a minute here you can use the polygonal lasso tool this is best for ground shots um, or parts um, or an image where parts of the aircraft blend in very well with the background what you do is you just drag this line around the outside of the aircraft and you just click to add a point and then it you click to add another point it's plenty easy but it takes a long time and you just draw that around the entire aircraft and then you're good and it will select it but we're in a lucky 
or rather unlucky but still lucky position where um, there's enough contrast between the aircraft and the background, not enough to make the magic wand tool work, but um, enough to make the quick selection tool work. So what you do here with the quick selection tool is you just click a spot and then you can kind of drag it and it'll automatically select part. And you just keep clicking and dragging until you have the whole airplane selected. And uh, if, if you want to be an overachiever, you can uh, make sure you select little antennas or something like this. But uh, that's not too big of a problem if you don't. You just got to have most of the aircraft. So you just keep clicking and dragging. And I will pause the video and skip to um, when we're done for you. Okay, so now we've got the whole aircraft selected, and you can see I didn't make too much of a fuss about selecting small bits of sky like this, um, or rather not selecting them. It's not that big of a deal, but again, if you want to be an overachiever, by all means, go ahead. Uh, so now that we've got the whole airplane selected, we're going to go to Select, Modify, Expand, and then you just need to expand this uh, by a few pixels just to make sure there is um, there isn't anything you missed. Uh, so I do, I typically do three, sometimes people do like five or something, but it's it's fine either way. You're just going to hit enter, that's going to um, expand the selection as you can see. Um, and then you're going to hit control J, that's going to, or command J, that's going to make a new layer uh, out of what you had selected. Now you can go to um, image, I believe it's over here. Um, uh, image size, or you can, or the keyboard shortcut is Alt Control I. If you saw that there, um, I have permission to upload at file sizes of up to 1920 pixels on the long side. So typically I would do that, but for most people, um, you're not going to be able to do that. So you're going to go down to 1280 as a maximum. Uh, then, so you can see it's just changing the file size. It's not really doing anything bad, but uh, yeah. So then we're going to go to filter up there, sharpen, smart sharpen, make sure reduce noise is set to zero, at least for now. And then you're going to select a sharpening amount that works for this. This was taken on the 70 to 300 kit lens that came with my D3400. So um, 83, uh, that's OK, maybe a little much. Um, we'll go with like uh, 75 probably is about sounds about right. Um, and then if, if you do have permission to upload at 1920 or bigger file sizes, you will need slightly more sharpening the bigger you get, just because it's a bigger photo. So once you've got that amount selected, you just go ahead and hit enter. Now we're going to come over here and grab the eraser tool, and you'll set the opacity um, just by how sharp the photo is. Uh, if it's a really soft photo, like you can see I was editing one a little bit before this that was pretty soft, you're going to want it um, down near 60, 50, sometimes I've even gone down to like uh, 35, 40 in an effort to save it. Um, but for this one, since it's so sharp, uh, I think we're going to go about 95, and you could even go 100, just because it's so sharp at 1280. And then you're just going to go around some areas like the cockpit or the titles or these lines here. You can see the sharpening has made them kind of jagged. And so you just, that, that doesn't look so good. 
and that will lead to an over sharpening rejection. So we're just erasing those little bits uh, to avoid that. And you're going to do that over the entire aircraft. And this, aside from selection, um, selecting the aircraft with like a uh, quick selection tool or something, is the uh, longest part of the photo editing process. So I'll go ahead and pause the video again um, and skip to when we're done. Okay, so if we zoom in here, you can see um, if you check it with before I kind of went over the cockpit, the titles, especially subtitles needed it in this case too, engine details, tail details, um, some of these uh, wing outlines and such, just to get rid of some of that excess sharpening. Um, and so um, some of it's going to vary um, what you need to do between photos. Um, but make sure you always get those parts of the titles, um, the wing areas like these are going to need it too. Registration typically needs it. Um, so just make sure you got all of those and once you do, you're going to go to layer, flatten image. And then um, this isn't necessary if there isn't a lot of noise in the photo, digital noise that is, but I like to do it anyway, especially when it, when it really needs it. Um, you're going to go back to the sharpening page, that's filter, um, sharpen, smart sharpen, and you're going to just zoom in, I like to go to about 200%, and select um, an amount of noise reduction that works and reduces most or at least a good portion of the noise but don't make sure just just make sure you don't use too much because then it starts to look bad and that can often lead to rejections so again you'll need more the bigger the file gets but uh, in this case, it looks like 10 is going to do just fine. You can see if I click it, it undoes the action in the preview um, versus releasing. And you can see it's reducing a lot of noise from the shadows. So when you've selected that, you're just going to hit enter and then you're done. You just got to save it. Control S or Control Shift S. Let's see here. And then whatever folder, whatever you want to name it, whatever folder you want to put it in. I have my edited photos, edited photos folder that I like to put it in. And you're just going to hit save. And when this pops up, make sure your uh, slider is at the highest quality possible. Anything less will give you a JPEG uh, compression artifacts rejection. Uh, at least it most likely will. Then you hit OK, and it's saved. And then you can go see it in your um, in your folder. Where is it? Uh, there it is. Once you have that. Uh, you just grab the registration and you're good to upload it. And that's the entire editing process. Hi, my name's Michael Rodeback. I take pictures of airplanes and upload them to websites in my spare time. It's a hobby. I've had a lot of help from friends in the plane spotting community, and now I'm paying it forward. I'm here to give you my tips and tricks for success on plane spotting websites. So if you liked the video, give it a like. If you didn't like it, hit the dislike button twice. If you have any tips, questions, or ideas, comment below and subscribe to make sure you get notified when new videos get released that hopefully will teach you some very useful things. 
Relevant links are in the video description, so be sure to check it out if you're curious. That's all for now, folks. Until the next video, I wish you all good photos and temperature-controlled thoughts on your spotting trips.